Hey Shogunit and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be doing something a little different by talking about video games that ruin friendships. We've all been there, you're playing a game with your friends, things get heated, and before you know it, you're on the news for supposedly running over Jared with a snowmobile. Jared, you know what you did, why don't you tell your lawyer what happened? Anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. Mario Party! The classic Nintendo game is a staple of any game night, but it can also be a source of some less than friendly disputes for many players. Between the random chance elements and the cutthroat mini games, I'm talking about you sleeping snore. I mean, why does a chain chop even have to fucking sleep? Look, all I'm gonna say is it's easy for tensions to run high. Look, Mario Party is a game that has been around for longer than the notorious Archon Nano and is a favorite among many gamers. It's a collection of mini games, aka bullshit, where my controller dies during a last minute rush, but I digress, where players can compete against each other to collect coins and stars. However, the game is notorious for its random elements, such as the unpredictable dice rolls and the inevitable star moving right next to a player with fucking five stars. Each can quickly turn the tide of the game. It's also known for its very cutthroat nature, where players can steal coins or stars from each other and use items to hinder their progress, aka the reason Jared has to remove snowmobile tracks from his ass. All of this is to say these factors combined can lead to tensions running high and friendships being put to the test. So if you're playing a game night with Mario Party on the menu, be prepared to go to court. League of Legends. This popular MOBA game has a reputation for being one of the most toxic gaming communities out there. And you know who you are. Prostrate yourself before the masses, or release that chat log from that match after your girlfriend dumped you for a Valorant player. From roasting the hell out of someone's shit maneuvers, to trolling hard on unsuspecting opponents. It's easy to see how this game can put a strain on friendships. Okay, I wanted to take this part of the video and take a little sidebar, because this is something I've wanted to talk about for a long time, but I think the League of Legends community is horrible. The mysteriousness of being stuck behind a computer on a keyboard and not having to deal with the repercussions of your actions can lead to very toxic behavior in this community, such as trash talking, trolling, and even cyberbullying, up to and in, in including continued harassment. This toxic behavior can escalate quickly and cause rifts between friends, especially if one friend feels like they are being singled out or blamed for a loss. And it's sad to see, as you would believe, League players will want to be friends with more than their tube sock and a Miku figure. Overcooked. This cooking simulator game may seem innocent enough, but when you're trying to coordinate with your friends to cook meals under a time limit, Things can quickly spiral out of control. Overcooked is a game that requires cooperation and coordination between players to prepare and cook meals within a certain time limit. The game's mechanics involve players having to work together to chop ingredients, cook them, and plate them before the timer runs out. However, as the game progresses, the levels become more challenging and require even more teamwork and communication. This can lead to you yelling at your friend like you're Gordon Ramsay waiting on some motherfucking high with it, and cause a rift between players, especially when one player is not pulling their weight or is making the same damn mistakes. To me, I need bacon, not lettuce, clutch up or leave push. It's not uncommon for players to yell at each other or assign a little blame when things go wrong. The pressure of the time limit and the need for absolute perfection can cause relationships to be strained, even if it's just for the duration of the game. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm sorry, Brenda. I I won't yell at the kids anymore. But if that little shit misses another tomato, I'm getting a divorce. 
today. But that's not to say that Overcooked can't be a fun game to play with friends. It can be a great way to test your communication and teamwork skills. And when everything comes together perfectly, it can be incredibly satisfying. However, it's important to approach the game with a sense of humor and a willingness to forgive mistakes as things are bound to get chaotic at times. Just sign the papers, Brenda. He missed another fucking cutting board. He's clearly not my son. Super Smash Bros Ultimate. This beloved fighting game may seem like a fun way to spend an afternoon, but when you're playing against friends who take the game way too seriously, things can quickly turn, I'm not gonna say vengeful, so I'll just say all kindness leaves that room the third time you get three stocked. Ultimate is a game loved by many, but it's also a game that will decimate friendships. I'm telling you, if you're at a friend's house and they suggest to play Smash, just fucking leave. That's not your friend anymore. Either way, the outcome is the same. While it's true that the game can be a blast to play with less sweaty friends, it's also a game that can bring out a competitive side in certain dehydrated rascals. That can lead to arguments and an increase of assault court cases. One of the biggest issues with Super Smash Bros Ultimate is that it's a fighting game, which means that there's always a sweaty winner and a bitter loser. When you're playing against friends who take the game way too seriously, winning becomes everything and losing can be devastating, especially when they hit you with that, you almost got me there. This can lead to heated arguments, trash talking, and even physical altercations. In Let's not say extreme cases, let's say mm, more often than not. One final issue with Super Smash Bros is that the game is incredibly complex. With so many characters, stages, and items to choose from, it can be overwhelming for people with a life. This can lead to one friend feeling like they're constantly losing, while the other friend dominates the game. This power imbalance can lead to resentment and frustration, which can ultimately destroy friendships. I know, I know, but Jay, you shit on League players, but you play Call of Duty? And my response is simply this. Fuck you. It's my video. <laughs> But no, seriously, I'll, I'll give it its fair shake, even though I've played the whole series on my channel, go check it out, but I'll give it its fair shake. This popular first person shooter game has a reputation for being one of the most competitive and intense games out there, where you can go to hear slurs only said in early versions of the Bible. Between the high stakes gameplay and the toxic community, it's no wonder friendships can crumble to dust during high stake matches. Unfortunately, the toxic behavior in the Call of Duty community is not limited to in-game chat. Online forums and social media platforms are often filled with heated arguments and personal attacks. Players who don't perform well or who make mistakes are often subject to ridicule and harassment in these spaces. This kind of behavior is not only harmful to individuals, but it can also have a negative impact on friendships. When friends play together and one of them starts to exhibit toxic behavior, it can cause a rift to form in the middle of the friendship due to the friend not being used to that kind of trash talk. It's not uncommon for players to take things very personally, especially when their friends are the ones perpetuating the attacks. See guys, I can be civil. I can, you know, I can lay the facts down. I'm, I can be not biased. Now take all that civil bullshit and throw it out, cause it's time for Mario Kart. This beloved racing game may seem innocent enough, but it's actually a battle of champions where only the strong will survive. <laughs> you guys can see this is the one I'm actually good at, huh? What makes Mario Kart so challenging and fun is the use of power-ups and items 
that can be collected throughout the race to fuck over your friends. These items can either help you get ahead or cause your opponents to fall behind, which adds a layer of strategy to the game and can also leave some very hard feelings. The use of these power ups can also lead to frustration and resentment between friends. The infamous blue cell, for example, is a weapon that targets the player in first place, causing them to spin out and lose valuable time. While it's a useful item for those in the back of the pack, it can be a source of great fury for the player in the lead. I'll just say right now that some friend groups never come back from a blue seal incident. Also, Mario Kart's drifting mechanics, top level by the way, also require a high level of skill and precision, which can lead to a wide skill gap between players. When one player is significantly better than the others, it can make the game feel unfair, leading to accusations of cheating and removal of Mario Kart from the group gaming pool. Which, you know, I'm a master, so like if you play to me, you'll probably just be bored sitting all the way back there in the back. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I'm going to end it off here for today. Let me know in the comments if there's any games that almost made your friend group fall apart. Also, I know this is kind of a new video style, so let me know what you think. If you like it, subscribe for more. And as always, return to your Shogun Safe Samurai. Peace.